I'd like to start with a little preview of what we'll be doing in statistics. And when we talk about statistics, the thing that we're dealing with is data. Um, like in algebra, you know, we deal with variables or trying to find the value of the variables. In statistics, we have to have data so that we can perform the statistics. So data is the collection of observations, such as measurements, genders, survey responses, favorite colors, um, the number of credit hours students might be enrolled in. All of these things are data. And we get that data so that we can learn more about various groups. Now, getting data sounds like it might be easy, but it really involves a lot. The definition of statistics kind of outlines what we'll be doing this semester. Okay, it says statistics is the science of planning studies and experiments, obtaining data, and then organizing, summarizing, presenting, analyzing, interpreting, and drawing conclusions based on data. And these are the things that we're going to be doing uh, this semester. Uh, in the first couple of chapters, we'll look at ways that we can plan studies. We'll look at different types of studies. Um, and then also, we're going to look at and even uh, participate in collecting some data. Uh, in chapters 2 and 3, we start looking at organizing that data and summarizing it using various numerical representations. And then um, we'll move on to other topics. But ultimately, you know, what we like to see is a presentation of the data and of what we've learned. Um, also, you know, an analysis of what we can infer from that data. Um, and so that's part of the analyzing, interpreting, and drawing conclusions based on the data. So statistics is more than just a pretty picture. It includes everything from planning the study, and we're going to talk about how important it is to um, plan your study so that you have good data, and then it goes all the way to drawing conclusions about other groups other than uh, the ones whose data we've collected. Now, I've mentioned uh, groups a couple of times, and so there are two groups that we'll be talking about. The first is the population. And the population is the complete collection of all measurements or data that are being considered. Okay, so you'll hear me say many times that the population is often too large for us to get our hands on. Um, suppose we want to know what the favorite car color was of students here at Midlands Technical College. Well, we have you know, upwards of 10,000 students. It would take us a lot of time to go around and try and find the favorite color for each of our students. It would take a lot of time. And so usually we don't collect data on the entire population. Sometimes it's possible. Uh, and we'll talk about one of those um, cases in just a moment. But whenever we have the complete collection of all measurements or data that are being considered, that is our population. But again, the population is usually too large, it costs too much, or it takes too much time for us to collect data on the entire population. Now, if we can do that, then that's what we call a census. The collection of data from every member of a population is what we call a census. Uh, every 10 years in our country, we uh, try to collect a census or do the census. However, it's never really accurate because by the time we start, it takes so long to collect the data that the population has actually changed. Some people will have passed away. Some people will have been born. And so, you know, getting a census on a very large population is really, 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 really difficult. It can be easier if we have the information in our database. So, for instance, if we go back to looking at 
uh, students at a particular college, and let's say we're interested in knowing how many credit hours students are enrolled in in a particular semester, then we could get that information easily because with uh, today's technology, all of that information is in the computer and we could find that. Okay. However, before we had all of that easily stored in a computer, um, getting getting that census or that complete collection of data for the number of credit hours in which students were enrolled would be time consuming um, and require a lot of resources. Okay, So we usually don't get a census, although it's not totally impossible. Um, instead, we often use a sample. A sample is a subcollection of members selected from a population. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about exactly how those things get selected, methods of making that selection. But usually what we'll do is get a sample and then we want to use that sample to make some inferences about the population. That said, here are some notes that we should remember about the population versus the sample. The population is usually too large to collect data from. Uh, it can take too much time or require too many resources. Okay, also, uh, the sample data that we get should be representative of the population. Okay, we can get lots of different samples, but if our sample doesn't really represent the population that we're trying to uh, learn about, then it's not going to be a good study. And then finally, if sample data are not collected in an appropriate way, um, the data may be completely useless. So that means it needs to be collected in a way, um, first of all, where it's unbiased. Um, that is, there's no tendency towards certain elements in the population versus others. Um, also, it needs to be um, collected in a way that's natural um, to that particular process. For instance, um, I think about the example of collecting data on the amount of liquid that disposable baby bottle liners would hold. And I could tell you a long story about this, but we actually had uh, this as a project some years ago. And when I went into the lab, I saw people with the disposable liners, and before they poured the liquid into the bag, they were blowing it up with their mouth. Okay, well, what's the problem with that? One, obviously, if you blow it up with your mouth instead of just pouring the liquid into it and letting the weight of the liquid expand the bag, then, you know, that's going to give you a different type of sample. Um, you're going to have some bias there. And the reason we wouldn't want to blow it up is because that's not the way that a mother or father of a small child would handle that bag. The whole purpose of those bags is that they are pre-sterilized. And so when we collect the data, even though we're interested in knowing how much liquid it's going to hold, um, it's not going to give us an accurate reading that we can compare to the natural way in which these bags are used if we blow them up with our mouth first. So our sample data needs to be collected in, a, in an appropriate way um, that represents you know, the population that's unbiased and that also represents the procedure, the, the natural procedure of how those particular items would be used. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. It says identify the sample and population and also determine whether the sample is likely to be representative of the population. Okay, the newspaper USA Today published a health survey and some readers completed the survey and returned it. Okay, so what would the sample be? Well, the sample in this case would be um, those readers who completed and returned the survey. Okay, the population, well, um, you know, we can ask USA what their target population was, you know, or we could talk about what the actual population was. We'll, we'll try to take a guess at what USA Today was probably doing, and we'd say citizens of the USA. Okay, um, you know, that could be debated or whatever, you know, depending on how you're looking at it. But let's say that the population would be citizens of the United States of America. Then the question is, 
would this sample be representative of the population? And the answer to that would be no. Okay, the reason being is not everyone is going to read USA Today. So uh, I don't read USA Today, uh, and so I wouldn't be allowed to participate in that survey. I wouldn't be able. Okay, they would exclude people who don't read USA Today. Um, so a better population might be the readers of USA Today. Um, however, there would still be some bias because we'll learn about the self-selected survey a little bit later. Um, those people who returned the survey selected themselves to participate in the survey. And often in a self-selected survey, we have bias. People feel very strongly about the issue one way or the other. But we'll discuss that a little more later. All right, same thing here. Um, we have America Online ask subscribers to respond to this question. Which slogan do you hate the most? Responders were given several slogans used to promote car sales, and Volkswagen's slogan received 55% of the 33,160 responses. The Volkswagen slogan was, Relieves Gas Pains. Okay, so again, what's the sample here? Okay, well, we had some people who responded to a survey, so they would be... Um, our sample, the AOL subscribers our population? who responded to our population the survey. would be AOL subscribers, okay, because this survey, uh, depending on where it's placed, you know, might not be accessible by those who are not a subscriber of AOL. So let's say that our population is AOL subscribers. Is this representative of the population? Again, we would say no, because it's a self-selected survey. And so people, you know, might only respond if they ver if they feel very strongly about this particular issue. Okay, so it's really important that you understand the difference between the sample and the population. Um, again, we'll be using a sample to make an inference about a population, and we want to make sure that that sample is representative of the population. 